All right, welcome back. This is part five, where we detail a specific state. In this case, we are detailing Oregon and their specialty codes. Um, the last slides gave us an overview of the fire codes that spanned years 2015 through 2021. Here we're going to look at um, Oregon and show how a, this specific state's current requirements are based on the 2018 version of the IFC and IRC. Um, and so we want to look at what's required for energy storage system installations in that particular location. Here, since we're just looking at this code cycle, we can get a little more detailed on the specific requirements. For example, let's look at the specifics of the commercial ESS signage. Um, we can just read this verbatim. Yes, it's required on doors or locations near entrances to battery rooms, stating the room contains energies, battery energized battery systems, energized electrical circuits, and the type of battery. Also, uh, a directory is required at the energy storage system disconnecting means if it's not within sight of the ESS. Battery cabinets in occupied work centers require a label, and that label um, must indicate the make, model, electrical rating, and hazards of the energy storage system. You'll notice that the um, a couple things that I didn't pull out up top is that uh, on the left-hand side, that's the Oregon's specialty structural code. On the right-hand side is the Oregon residential specialty code. Um, and that Oregon residential specialty code is just being adopted um, as we were making this class. And so um, it's technically an adoption date of April 1st, 2021. However, it's not fully effective. They have a phase-in period until September 30th. And so you'll notice I have a little question mark here on the actual section code number because they didn't have um, their documents uploaded to the Oregon Building Codes website. Um, so but we're guessing that that section number will be section 327. Um, when that document is fully available. You'll also notice that uh, the 28, because it is based on 2018 code um, for IRC, um, and remember 2015 IRC did not have any energy storage uh, regulations. Um, so the, the 2018 is something, um, but it's pretty minimal when, as compared to the 2021 version, which you would see in a location say like California and uh, 855 will go into those residential requirements, but here you'll you'll notice like, okay, they have a threshold of one kilowatt hour. Um, so they are regulated by this document um, if it's over one kilowatt hour. Um, so far, the only thing on this page, anyway, we've got a couple more pages is the ventilation. Uh, yeah, you need to ventilate it if it's a type of energy storage system that emits flammable gas. And uh, we'll stop there and move on to the next page. All right. Let's look at the construction and permit application requirements. Um, that's a good one to read. Um, a lot of companies make plan sets for um, solar and solar plus storage systems, and you want to know what needs to be in those construction documents if you're working in Oregon. In this case, yeah, permit a permit is required, and uh, permit application requires that the location and layout of room with ESS, um, they want to see that right on the plan set, hourly fire resistance ratings, for that room um, that will be housing the ESS, quantities and types of ESS that will be in the battery location. It wa they want to know um, in your construction documents, ESS ratings and listings, energy management system details. Um, where is the sign? Signage location and content, what's gonna be on those signs? Fire extinguishing methods, um, smoke detection and ventilation details rack arrangement and seismic support criteria um, in those construction documents if they are required. So that is more detail than we gave in the last table and so um, those are the kinds of things you need to have in your construction documents. Also as I mentioned um, there's not a lot of uh, residential, residential requirements uh, on this page of our table um, other than a listing requirement that yes, we need to have UL 9540 listed um, ESS for the Oregon specialty, Oregon residential specialty code that just came into play for 2021 based on the 2018 version of the IRC. Moving forward, here um, on this page, we can look at the location of battery restrictions. There are restrictions, yes. Uh, we must prevent access to unauthorized personnel. Battery cabinets and occupied work centers shall be within 10 feet of equipment they support. 
And let's look at the fire extinguishing and detection system requirements. Uh, yes, they are required. Remember, we're talking commercial applications um, in this column. Automatic sprinkler system or alternative fire extinguishing system for batteries that react with water. I believe they are referring to a sodium-based battery, which um, that is not lithium um, that we are discussing here, primarily for the current energy storage systems that we are primarily installing these days. Let's also notice that um, for the residential requirements, there is a restriction. Um, they cannot be in habitable space. Also, I want to point out um, just the outdoor, since it's one of the only things in the residential code um, in this code that is based on the 2018 IRC, um, the outdoor installation specifications. They actually mention repurposed EV batteries. Um, they're allowed uh, if installed outdoors or in detached sheds. Um, they're allowed if located not less than five feet from exterior walls, property lines, and public ways. So it looks like that the industry is anticipating that we will be using um, a fair amount of repurposed EV batteries, and so they want to make sure that our restrictions um, think about that and plan for that. So we're going to keep those five feet from exterior walls, property lines, and public ways, um, outdoors, or in detached sheds. Again, um, even though we got more detailed in this table because it was just for a single year cycle, um, it's still simplified. We didn't copy the code verbatim um, word for word. So you still want to go, if you're in Oregon, to the Oregon Specialty Codes and look up the specific requirements and make sure all the language um, matches up to what you're doing and how you're planning your systems. And also realize that um, don't just go by the iCodes version um, of those codes because lo particular locations, uh, individual locations, can modify the language and often do. Um, you'll see that in the California codes. Um, they use the base language of the IFC and IRC and IBC, um, but they modify it to suit um, their particular jurisdictions um, and what they have voted in as, as the rules that they want to see in that location. So make sure you go to your building or fire department and to look up the exact language that they're utilizing for your jurisdiction.